The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, Canadian franchisees. This is Lisa Rossman here. I'm the Vice President of Brand Experience. I'm also joined by Marlo Metcalf, who is the Director of Operations for Canada, and Jacqueline Palmieri, who is our Aesthetic Operations Managers for all of North America. Today, we are here to talk about the Canadian facial vision. Um, the session itself is being recorded for any other team members that were unable to make it. Um, there is going to be a follow-up communication that goes out later today, which will have the recording along with the slides linked in and any other follow-up content related to what we discussed today, including your favorite, a survey. Um, but the purpose of today is really to discuss how we move forward from what we just went through the last 18 months, months up in the Canadian market. Um, we'll be covering a variety of topics today and we are going to try and keep the session to about an hour, but would like to invite your questions as they come in and of course, anything that we don't get to on questions, we will download a report after this session, go ahead and answer any questions that were not answered during the session, and then we'll send out a follow-up FAQ report. So not to worry. On today's session, we do wanna cover three key initiatives to drive your Canadian aesthetic business. So really, we wanna get right into things. And really what we wanna focus on with all of the Canadian franchisees over the next six to 12 months are these three pillars. Number one, we wanna assist you in increasing your facial foot traffic. That means getting more bookings on your appointment book on a weekly and even daily basis. In the subsequent slides, we're going to share multiple different action plans as to how to accomplish that task. Second, we really wanna hone in and focus on esthetician specific training. We know that by building confidence and focusing on education and training, even for the most seasoned esthetician, this is what helps us to maximize every opportunity that does come through your door and give your estheticians the tools they need to build repeat business. We're talking about pre-books, we're talking about building up a request, request rate and following, and building more targeted treatment plans that can include multiple upgrades per ticket as part of multiple sessions, which will also go in tandem with building out your membership base. And then finally, possibly most exciting to work on, especially on our end, is discussing where we go from here with our advanced modality skincare menu. We have a lot of different options to present to you today. We've been hard at work behind the scenes. We're excited to share them with you and then help have you sort of help us decide which direction or directions we wanna take our facial menu over the next six to 12 months. But let's start with how to increase your facial bookings. This is a campaign that we actually first put together a year ago in October of 2020, when we thought we were reopening Canadian stores for skincare services. You guys know the end of the story there, but this campaign has really been in a wait and see pattern until now. But what we really wanna talk about is just focusing first and foremost on just getting you more facial appointments on the books. So basically what we'd like to do is have each of you really focus on a 30 day period to accelerate your skincare business. And we really think that this very focused approach will give us something super measurable to look at and see the impact of versus a prior 30 days. But what we did was we looked at the Canadian chain average for facial totals, going back eight weeks and looking at mid-July until the beginning of September. We looked at kind of where we are as sort of a state of the union. And right now what we're seeing as a chain average is about an average of 19 facials per week. And so obviously the starting point for you at your level is you have to establish very clear goals for where you wanna to get to. So your first step, and with the help of Marlo if needed, is for you to establish in your own spa, how many facials are you averaging per week? And really the goal here is super simple. Let's increase it by 10. Wherever your number is, if you're doing nine or if you're doing 29, we wanna increase it by 10. And by establishing the super clear goal, it helps you with communicating that goal to your front desk team, to your manager, and even to your estheticians. 
So we know that if we can get you 10 more facials a week, which is just an average of a little more than one more a day, and we're averaging a $101 average service ticket, which is the current Canadian chain average for an average service ticket. And this was pulled straight off the KPI. This is not even a facial specific ticket. This is just your ticket. We can get you 10 more bookings a week. You're averaging 101. This is another $1,000 a week in revenue for you. You know, that has to excite you because that adds up to at least $4,000 a month in additional revenue simply by getting 10 more facials a week on your books. This is absolutely achievable. How are we going to get here? The strategy is simple, but needs to be executed. Have you ever heard of people say it's simple, but not easy? Well, that's what this is. We have a three-pronged approach here. The first is by talking to you, the spa owners. What do you need to do? You need to determine how much, you know, how extreme do you want to go in terms of, are you willing to run outside the box promotions? Do you want to make some adjustments to the marketing? Do you want to, you know, focus on additional training? Do you want to do all three? But starting from today's session is really where you learn some of the success stories of what other folks have done. Uh, some of the adjustments to the marketing playbook that we've made for you with huge focus on digital. Um, and then you need to figure out how to get both of your departments between your spa associates and your estheticians trained up and aligned on this goal with you. The front desk is truly the real heroes of this particular promotion. We love the estheticians and we absolutely want them to be there and waiting for these appointments to come in and then to know what to do with these appointments in terms of not just doing a classic facial, but really speaking to this customer, understanding what their concerns are for service, acknowledging what they see, and then making recommendations for customized treatment approaches. So that's really where the esthetician can, can drive this home, is really by exciting that customer who does book that appointment. But the front desk, again, is the real hero here. And we need to spend the time with the front desk associates to make these just like small tweaks to what they're already doing every day in order to drive additional interest and just feature this entire segment of the business. And more on that to follow. What I'm about to share for you are a collection of <laughs> facial promotions ranging from super aggressive uh, to something not too outside the box, but super easy to implement and really uh, will not cost a whole lot to execute, but I just want to disclaim that what we're about to share um, are some success stories from promotions that were a, a little bit outside the box, but certainly got the results and we're here to show. So facial promotion A, let's go over what this included. There was one non-member promotion offered and then two versions of a member promotion offered, but these were bo both member promotions were done at the very same time. So first, the non-member promotion was utilizing a Facebook lead gen campaign, which this is something that you would work with Scott Gallagher to execute. And basically, if you've not run a lead gen campaign before, it's a paid for option that you would decide what your budget would be to, to devote to it, maybe $200, possibly even $300. Not sure. Again, you'd have to speak with Scott. But the offer would be to attract in a brand new customer, someone that's never been to your business before. So rather than just posting something on your own Facebook page that your current you know, followers and they're the only ones that would see it, this would actually go out to you know, anyone in the demographic that Scott set up for you within a certain mileage radius, certain demographic, et cetera. And the offer in and of itself is for a $29.95 facial. Now, it doesn't have to be $29.95. You can go with $39.95. Um, you know, it has to be just something that's super aggressive and you would want to have, you know, your own parameters around, is it a Monday through Friday promotion? Um, is it this week only, et cetera. So this is a great way to just put out there to people that have never been into your business for getting facials on the box. So that's what they did for their non-members. And then two options for the member promotions. And what's similar about the market that executed this was this particular market had just come off of a mask on requirement for facials. So the types of challenges that this particular market was encountering was a customer who was a little bit skittish about coming back in for a facial after being required everywhere that they go to have a mask on. Um, and that included their existing members. So what they wanted to do was offer something super aggressive, 
um, and, you know, rewarding to the people that had stayed loyal to them throughout this entire time. So for members, what they did was they offered a member appreciation facial, and that was $30 off of a member priced facial. So if you're a member, you know, paying $69.95 or $79.95, that was, it was $30 off and it was tracked via a discount campaign. The second um, offer for the members was another member appreciation that if they booked a facial right after their massage, it was free, but it had to be booked right after. 11 o'clock massage goes right into a 12 o'clock facial. The promotion does not apply if they are booked separately. Obviously, this is super rich, um, again, but this was something that they felt strong enough that they just needed to get their estheticians to work. And they knew that as soon as the estheticians got this person on the table, that they would get upgrades out of the customer and they would get a rebook out of the customer. And it absolutely did pay off. This promotion took place in our Chicago locations. Um, here are some results for, from, from both prior to the promotion running and the promotion actually running. I spoke to these particular owners. They had several estheticians that were coming into work. And we're basically sitting there throughout the day in the break room, kind of twiddling their thumbs and not getting booked. And the owners were very, very nervous. They were going to lose their staff. So they were very open to doing a super aggressive promotion. And as you can see, not only did you see a huge jump in product sales going from 9,300 amongst these stores to one month later, going up to 17,000, their facial sales themselves went from 44,000 to 69,000 across their locations, um, and their, their number of service tickets nearly doubled. They were also able to effectively pre-book these clients for another appointment, which is a huge goal for all of you in Canada, as you're simply looking to build your skincare business. And we know that skincare customers are very loyal, especially if they're getting results with their treatments. So we were very excited by the results that we saw by this group of locations. And then we also had several more locations that executed the same promotion as well. As you can see with very similar results, seeing a jump not only in service tickets, but also in product sales. So obviously the more at-bats you have, the more opportunities you have to position not only upgrades, but also home care in between your pro treatments. So we looked at facial promotion A as a huge win. Again, all of this information will be sent to you um, as part of the follow-up. Um, also on the follow-up email that isn't included in today's um, webinar is actually the performance of this spa. As you can see, the promotion ended on December the 23rd last year. The first time that we had presented this, several owners had asked what happened in January. Um, and while I don't have that on the slides here, we actually do have a full analysis of January performance that will be included in the follow-up email to show you how much this promotion actually carries through. So while you are comping things, et cetera, during the promotion period, what you get back from it in terms of repeat bookings and just starting that snowball effect of getting that business going is really what sweetens the deal. Let's talk about facial promotion me. So again, we have both a non-member promo and a member promotion. Uh, the people that did promotion B actually layered in um, another upgrade promotion on top of the, the member or non-member. So basically non-members, very similar. They did a $29.95 intro facial, but they did not execute this through a Facebook lead gen campaign. It was just simply an offer that they had. They utilized their email campaign system, general Facebook, um, and then offered it, you know, to massage customers that were walking in for their appointments and may not have been members. So again, a steeply discounted introductory facial. Um, and uh, this was basically $30 off what member price was. So if you guys are $79.95, um, then I would say it would be a $49.95 intro facial, perhaps not a $29.95. But I'm just speaking to the details of what was executed here. And then the member promotion, similarly speaking, $29.95 facials for members. And the target audience really was massage customers. Although if you were a, you know, a facial customer in the past, this still, you were still able to take advantage of this deal. Reason being, yet again, they were dealing with a customer base that was apprehensive and skeptical about going in somewhere, you know, without wearing a mask when they had been so used to wearing masks. So keep that in mind. I did feel like there were some parallels to what the Canadian market has experienced with that. 
um, as you guys did just pretty recently um, have the allowance of having the masks off. So. And then finally, they did the discounted facial upgrade promotion. So um, they actually did also discount dermal infusion, which I took out because dermal infusion would not be an option for all of you at this time. What they did was they did basically half price upgrades. So for your microderms, you also might wanna consider this for your peel services, whatever the price is, if they're 40, I would wanna offer them for 20. And again, so we're looking at results both prior to and post and during the promotion period. Um, again, you see a huge jump in double facial sales, right? Um, not quite double product sales, definitely double pre-books for another appointment. You see their upgrade percentages under the exceptional exfoliation category um, jumped as well. So these are tremendous results here. And just again, the number of facials, we went from 89 facials in two locations to 218. Um, just a few weeks later by running this promotion. So in the case of promotion B, there was nothing given away for free and there was no additional budget spent on a lead gen campaign. But as you can see, these are very encouraging results um, and definitely something worth, worth sharing with all of you. This is probably the most aggressive of the campaigns. Um, this actually follows the strategy of what a grand opening spa would do. Um, and this is an option that you may want to consider if you are really looking to kickstart your facial business. So if you're not aware, when we open a new location as part of the strategy, after the friends and family event, what we do is we have new opening locations offer what we call a grand opening Facebook event. And what they do is um, they put up, again, a Facebook lead gen campaign with a budget behind it to target, you know, a, as large of an audience in your local area as possible. And what we promote is basically a full week, typically Monday through Friday, of a first come, first serve, free facial. No strings attached. Um, again, this is pretty rich because obviously this would require you to be doing, you know, multiple service comps. Um, it would be for a classic facial. So any upgrades they would are not included in the promotion. So they would have to pay out of pocket for that. But what we've seen in our new openings is this has been a huge way to get prospects on your book and obviously have the estheticians, you know, keep them busy, give them opportunities to upgrade, to create treatment plans, to create pre-bookings, and of course, to help sell the membership because you know, the more prospects you have, the bigger the chance you have of growing your membership base. That's the biggest difference on our KPI report of our successful spas to our non-successful spas. We are a volume-based business. So you want prospects. Even if you convert 20% out of 100 people, that's better than converting 20% out of 30 people, right? So we just want leads on the book. If we know that our estheticians are educated and confident and know what to do with these appointments, I can rest assured that there's a great chance that this person comes back, that they join the membership, and that the next time they come back in, they're doing that microderm abrasion or they're doing that glycolic peel because their esthetician said so, because the esthetician knows what to do. If you're interested in this campaign, Scott Gallagher is certainly our person to coordinate this with. We do have a lot of details behind this and Marlo can absolutely help you with the execution of this. Um, but again, in our new spa openings, this is essentially a standard form of practice. And I'm not sure that for all the existing locations in the Toronto market that you've ever run a promotion like this. So again, this is just a great way to get the word out there in your community that you offer tremendous facial services to get a bunch of them on the book, create those conversion opportunities for you, um, and to consider what you would typically spend on traditional forms of advertising, this could be sort of substituted in lieu of a standard, say, postcard campaign, or in addition to, just depending on, you know, what your what your quarterly spend is. But we have always deemed this a well-worthy promotion, and we realize that this does not need to be limited just to newly opening locations. If you are just looking to kickstart your facial bookings period, this is a great way to do so. Um, on top of the promotion, if you want to continue throwing the deals at that customer, if it's a first timer and you're presenting the membership at checkout, perhaps, you know, let them know that, oh my gosh, because you're coming in on our, on our complimentary service offer, you're actually eligible for a special membership offer as well. This is only offered to the group taking advantage of this promotion. 
And if you join our lifestyle program today, we're actually giving away $20 promotional gift cards for you to use on a, on a subsequent service as well, in addition to today's complimentary facial. Um, so again, these are just little tips and tricks that we feel are strong, strong ways for you to get the name of your facial business out there very quickly. So we had a few locations um, execute this complimentary service promotion. These are US locations. Um, these are also, as you can see, geographically sort of all over the place. And um, some of the folks did this, like a lot of these were newer locations. So as you'll see, they also offered a complimentary massage. In the case of your campaigns that we're suggesting for you, I do not believe that you need to include massages. Obviously the name of this topic is increasing facial bookings. So while we don't particularly suggest that you do the massage offer, um, you know, if you, if you want to kickstart that side of your business as well, obviously I'm not here to stop you. But for the purpose of today's discussion, we definitely suggest um, limiting it to the skincare offer. As you can see, most of them ran it for, you know, four or five days. We had one location run it for three. Um, and again, you can take a closer look at this analysis in your follow up but definitely something to consider, again, just depending on how open your facial book looks. So those are the richest of the offers that we have um, in our toolkit. But next we move along to our Dermalogica Face Fit experience, which uh, I'm proud to say we, we took some time to rebrand the look and feel of this. Um, we love the Face Fit in and of itself, but I do think that along the way, we were struggling to figure out a way of how do we market this and where does it fit in with the hand and stone menu? And I think we can all agree that the face fit experience being a 10 minute service really fits in best for the customer that's never had a facial before. And it's kind of that massage customer that doesn't even know where to start. Um, and that's actually sort of the theme of the campaign. This is targeting a massage customer that's already coming into your spa for massage only and is the type of person that probably would verbally declare, oh, I would never book a facial. I don't even know anything about skincare. I don't even know if I need a facial. Um, I just have like really no interest. Um, but this is a great talking point. And again, that's the tagline. Don't know where to begin with your skin start with a face fit. Um, you have a couple of options here. As you can see on the screen, the, the counter card that we're featuring is the, the 10 minutes for $10 with 10 options. Um, we also have a second version of this counter card that's basically just 10 minutes, 10 options, and it's no dollars. Um, and that's totally up to you. We, you know, if you want to charge the $10, you obviously can. You may even want to utilize this as what your what your richest promotion is by giving this away for free. Um, here's logistically what we suggest with this particular promotion. This is really not something that we would recommend um, having your spa associates really talk up over the phone at the time of booking because this can tend to congest the appointment book. So this is a more, this is better to be done sort of on the spot um, at the time the customer arrives for their massage. There's a little bit of time before they've arrived 20 minutes early for their appointment and you have an esthetician who is not booked for, for, for that time block um, or the customer arrives on time for their massage and you have an esthetician available today at two o'clock um, right when they're finished with their massage. And so the spa associate would have to know to offer this at check-in. And so that's, again, where this comes back to the spa associate really controlling the rhythm and the flow of how we execute these little promotions. It's small tweaks, but they have to happen on a consistent basis. So offering something like this pretty much for every massage customer as they arrive for their appointment, hey, I don't know if you have 10 extra minutes, we're actually offering complimentary face fits, especially for customers who honestly don't even have a clue about their skin. Um, their esthetician is going to meet with you. We've got 10 different options. So there's really something for everyone. And they will give you just a quick education on what it is to take care of your skin. And I promise you will feel pampered and you will absolutely love how it complements your massage today. Simple and easy. But you as the spa leader 
you have to oversee the consistency of this being offered. There's nobody else that can oversee it, but you and or your in-house spa leader or manager. Why? Because your spa associate will offer this three times. They will get three no's and they will report back to you that this promotion doesn't work. Well, we keep going, right? The consistency, that's, that's the proof in the pudding, is offering it not just to three, getting three no's and then declaring it a loss. It's continuing to offer it throughout the week because what ends up happening with face fits is the customer gets on the table. A lot of times they're like, I love this. Can I just do a full facial while I'm already here? So it can easily convert to a full booking. Or even if it's just the 10 minute experience, it provides a very simple retail opportunity and the opportunity for the esthetician to establish a rapport with this person and book a facial for a later date, maybe later in the week maybe next month. But this just, again, gives your estheticians that face time to actually engage with people who are already coming into your business. And it actually is specifically targeting people that don't have a clue about their skin. We know that you don't, and we're here to help. So that's why I love this promotion. It's super simple and easy. Um, the materials on this, I know, have been uploaded to your library, I believe, as of yesterday, all of the updates. Like I said, we have two versions of the counter card, the free and the $10. And then we've got some social media banner images. And then on the marketing playbook, we also have some posts dedicated to this as well. Another key area of opportunity we see is in connecting massage and facial services with the theme wherever we can. And we felt that our Himalayan Saltstone Massage and our Clarity RX Wellbeing Facial is actually a perfect connection point. So the content that you see on the left-hand side is somewhat of a, of a coupon um, that's available for you, um, complimentary to give out. And what it does is it should actually be given to all customers who enhance their massage with a Himalayan salt stone. And when they do that, they actually are given um, by the spa associate this coupon. And what that allows them to do is come in for a facial and get pretty much a complimentary well-being upgrade, right? Because the well-being upgrade is $20. Um, and this is a great way to appeal to people who are already tied in to the Himalayan concept and by sort of crossing it over to the all the benefits of the Himalayan salt and probiotic as accompanied by the Clarity RX well-being facial. We absolutely love this promotion. We think that the marketing on it is beautiful. It's simple. Um, and it's such a nice, easy way to cross people over from one to the other. And you will see as we move along that cross-promoting services um, will be a continued theme for us and something that we do plan to hone in on more strategically as we do continue to expand our menu. Getting the word out there. Um, so we've done a couple of things. Um, first and foremost, we have created a Canadian-specific 30-day digital um, and email campaign playbook. Again, that will be linked into the follow-up communication. But basically, this is a mix of video content, um, social media posts with verbiage on different product highlights, different service features, um, all of the facial promotional videos that include the upgrades that we do, uh, double upgrade combinations, so, you know, microderm and, and, and LED light therapy, et cetera. But we're really looking to bring our facial menu to life. And we're really looking for people to understand who we are and that we, not, we don't just offer fluff and buff facial services. We do have a super progressive menu and we are planning to put a continued focus on it. I would say with the 30-day playbook, if you decide that you do want to do this sort of 30-day blitz where you're committed to seeing if you can book an additional 10 a week, I would try and follow that 30-day marketing playbook that we've allocated as closely as you can. And honestly, the majority of it is just simple posts for you to go up on Facebook and put. Um, and then we do have some corresponding uh, demand force email campaigns that would go with it. So you're really trying to hit it from all angles. A lot of the time you are targeting your existing audience, but please feel free if you want to boost any of these posts and get the name of your business out there into the community just a little bit stronger. That's always an option to you um, and what your budget is. In addition to that, um, it's something that we've not yet introduced to the Canadian market, but we have in the U.S. and actually are meeting this week to discuss the launch in Canada is a campaign we call the Skinfluencers. And we absolutely recognize our need for a, a more robust presence on social media with 
who, what is our brand? And we do have this really exciting and enthusiastic workforce of service providers. And we really want them to do the talking about what it is that we offer in our treatment rooms. So in the US, we actually have a team of nine estheticians um, that have been selected and it was through an application process and they had to submit content. Um, and basically these skin fluencers are now tasked with creating um, raw footage that's sent in to our social media team so that they can edit and produce these really neat um, sort of professional looking videos that are fun, easy to follow, really appeal to that younger demographic. And we plan to just really continue featuring skincare services. And so this is not something to date that we've really had a focus on in Canada, but we are. And, and, and starting today and after our meeting this week, we absolutely plan to have more videos produced that are specific to Canada, but our full collection is really applicable to everything you guys do. On the next slide, I have a little demonstration of what um, the, one of the campaigns looks like. And this is something you can just very easily post on your Facebook or your Instagram. So I'm going to play it really quick. I don't know if you can hear the sound behind it, but we'll give it a try. Okay, well, the media is not playing on this one, guys. I am sorry, but basically this is like a 30 second video of a Hannah Stone esthetician performing a service. It's kind of in like a time lapse format. It's got fun music um, playing in the background, a um, little bit of context text put up on the screen throughout the video. And again, this is just to give people a peek inside our treatment room and what it's like to receive a facial. We are obviously trying to focus on the aspect of relaxation, but results. Um, and you will be able to view all of these videos um, in the folder that we send forth after today's presentation. I apologize that you can't watch it though. It is pretty cool. Okay. Don't know if the dairy spa is on the call today, um, but another strategy that you could employ is regarding your existing pay-per-click campaign and allocating um, you know, a budget increase with more of a focus on facial keywords. Um, these are results from last August and September, excuse me, I did not put 2020 in there, um, but they allocated um, an additional you know, $300 increase to their pay-per-click and all $300 to my understanding was devoted to facial keywords. As you can see, they saw a huge jump in clicks from just one month to the next. And fortunately that ended up trickling down to their number of facial tickets going from 22 tickets in August all the way up to 41 in September. And again, our intention here is to create that snowball effect of interest in facial services that can then carry through because we are expecting your departments to execute on again. Once we get that booking in, we are maximizing the opportunity within the appointment and then the front desk is doing their part as well in closing it out as a member and getting that person back in to see their esthetician. So modified phone scripting, again, going back to the spa, which is really being the hero of increasing facial bookings promotion, there's simple tweaks. And this is just one example of the things that the spa associates can do to help drive this effort forward. Answering the phone differently, making a small tweak to how they answer the phone and greet the caller. Thank you for calling Hannah Stone in Oakville. This is Lisa speaking. May I book you for our featured brightening facial? Just like you go to restaurants and they see the server starts out by telling you what the featured entree is for this evening or when you go through a drive through and they start off before taking your order about telling you about their specials, why can't we do the same thing when we answer our phone? You might not select the brightening facial, but pick something that's rather universal. And even if it changes when they get into the treatment room based on the expertise of the esthetician, that's fine. We've layered in something featured and exciting, and it's all to just draw attention to getting a facial booking on the appointment box. Um, I'll talk in just a moment about how we get this message out to your spa associates. Similarly, and what I've referenced throughout the presentation already today is the importance of the esthetician training and making sure that they are presenting a multitude of different options to the customer beyond the classic facial. A lot of the training that Jacqueline provides along with the rest of our training team provides 
is a toolkit of options that allows the customer to feel more part of the design process of their treatment plan. And one of the strategies that we do employ, and we've mentioned this one many times, is the mild, moderate, or progressive treatment approach, where the number of upgrades and the home care regimen actually start to scale up depending on what the client's willing to commit, um, along with how quickly they wanna see results. And in most cases, what we've learned is that this customer is booking an appointment because they wanna know what the professional sees and what they advise. And again, that's a lot of the training that we offer to your teams. So we've actually designed specific training for your teams that would come from the corporate hand in stone out to your departments in an effort to help your teams get on board with the increasing facial promotions effort. We have an esthetician training on the 27th of this month to be followed that Wednesday with a front desk training. Both sessions will be recorded. Both sessions will be 30 minutes or less. So they are quick, succinct, and to the point. And that's all in an effort to prepare you if this is an initiative that you would like to run in October or even beyond. Because these will be archived, they're available at any time. But we definitely think that a multi-pronged approach to the increased facial bookings campaign is what it will take to get this on track. It's not just doing one of these little things. It's not just posting on Facebook using the playbook every day. It's having some kind of featured promotion. It's having your front desk associates on board with the phone scripting verbiage, with offering face fits, et cetera. It's having your estheticians know what to do with these bookings when they come in, making sure they're encouraging pre-bookings. So it's sort of all of it gelled together and all of it with that common goal of 10 more facials per week. Finally, just a last suggestion to just kind of help bundle this all together and inspire your staff is to consider running a contest in conjunction with this 30 day effort. This helps everything. You know, we are measuring this 30 days versus prior 30 days. We've got a, a contest example on here. Um, please utilize our vendors. Dermalogica and Clarity know that we are doing this and they're open to help sponsoring prizes. So whatever we can do to help propel this effort forward in your own spa, please know that we are here and we have the full support of our vendors in execution of these as well. Okay, I'm just checking into the, um, the question queue. Looks like you guys are doing, there's a Nodi migration on the 27th and 29th. So if we need to change those um, training dates, that should be very, very simple to do. We certainly don't wanna get in the way of that. I don't know if, our, if your front, well, I guess your front desk would be obviously involved in that migration. So yes, absolutely. Thank you, Penny. We can definitely look at shifting those dates around because we certainly do not want to interrupt such an important initiative. So thanks for that heads up. Okay. Um, yes, the face fit is absolutely something that you can offer right now. The materials are all uploaded on the library and that's something that you guys can start offering as early as you know when you get off the phone from this webinar today. So that is all out there. Um, the protocols for the face fits are also available along with the cost per treatment on performing those. Um, again, like I said, there are 10 options for the face fit. So it is its own little protocol workbook. Um, those materials will be distributed afterwards and I do believe Jacqueline has those uploaded to the library as well. All right, at this time, I'm actually gonna turn it over to Jacqueline because she's gonna take you through um, the training initiatives that we have on the table for key initiative number two, which is esthetician training. Jacqueline? Hello, everyone. So I'm really excited to announce that in addition to Stephanie Santi really helping us with our full laser hair removal training program, I know that anyone that's launched laser hair removal this last year, you've definitely connected with Stephanie, um, but I'm really happy to announce that we have onboarded Rookstar Sonwall from our Ajax and Oshawa super successful in aesthetic spas to help with aesthetic training as well as supplemental laser training. So Stephanie could possibly still be coming out, but we also have Rookstar who's actually headed out to Saskatoon today to host their laser training for tomorrow. I'm also really excited to have Laura Dice who's from the US market in Chicago, so super close to the border up there. She is a really tenured esthetician with us. Um, she's been on the aesthetic training team since 2018, but has been with Hand and Stone for 10 years. She's actually already been to Canada once before, and she's really going to help support the Canadian aesthetic growth efforts. So I'm really excited to have both of these ladies on the team and for you to possibly connect with them in the future. 
And so the next thing that I do want to point out is we do have an available advanced training on site agenda. So you can always email me to request a training with a $350 training fee. But I think that it's really going to be worth your investment. It's education, motivation, growing your average facial tickets, positioning upgrades, especially multiple like double and triple upgrades, increasing product sales and how to position those and especially hands-on training of these advanced modalities because you really can't sell what you don't know. So that's really the first foundation part of the training, as well as role-playing and coaching exercises. So this day is really a full day of motivation, passion, and to really help uplift your estheticians. So if you are interested in booking one of these, definitely reach out to me and we can go ahead and start securing some dates. Thanks, Jacqueline. And I do want to point out that in addition to the opportunity for you to book an advanced training agenda completely on your own schedule, really at any point, um, we do actually have plans to send Laura up to the Canadian market on a, a semi-regular basis up to um, once a quarter. Um, and Laura will spend a couple of days in the market and she'll um, and Jacqueline will, will, will likely work out the coordination of this, but we're going to proactively reach out to you because Laura will be in the market. So those trainings, whether they'll be regionally based, you know, at the corporate office or in spas, um, those will be, you know, communicated to you as optional trainings that are in addition to these advanced days in your own spa on your own schedule. Um, and those will likely come at no cost because we are making that investment into your market and just getting somebody up there. So there's really a couple of options for your, you and your team to get advanced training. Definitely. If you're looking for something customized right away, reach out and we can set something up. We're also looking at corporate quarterly trainings as well as that laser hair removal quarterly trainings with Stephanie. So definitely have a lot in the works. And I want to just recap some of the virtual trainings that we've had over this past quarter, Clarity RX has set up a ton of virtual training specific for the Canadian market since you were reopening as some refreshers or for some spas that have recently taken it on. So they set up four different lessons on how to position upgrades and retail for all of these key concerns. And so those are archived. I have them in the services newsletter. They are up um, on there. So if you wanna do pass them over to your staff, feel free to do so. They also have one coming up next week, which is gonna be a mask for every occasion. They have a really large you know, mask, mask retail option. So it's gonna be going over how to position them in the treatment room and how to home care pair them. And so myself, I have recorded for you all the Welcome to Hand and Stone Aesthetics for anyone that's onboarding a new esthetician, wants a refresher, really just an overview of the brand, facial service menu, our educational platforms, really everything you need to get started. Next, I hosted a Canada reopening for skincare. So that was really just kind of going over everything that's happened pretty much in the last year. So any new upgrades that have been introduced, any new retail that has been introduced from Dermalogica or Clarity, and really anything that's happening, and then just a recap of how we go forward. And so actually tomorrow, I am going to be hosting a webinar called Upgrading for Effective Results. It's not upgrade specific, but it is ways to position all of these different upgrades, going over common objections, and also how to position these different upgrades to specific clients. So that's just a recap of really everything training. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. And I know Jacqueline's put a ton of effort into coordinating and designing and executing all of these webinars. Um, I do want to take a minute, you know, I want to reflect back on when the Canadian market was permitted to reopen for skincare. Um, if you might recall, we had sent out a survey trying to gain an understanding of, of what the training needs would be from, you know, how many new hires are, are you estimating you'll be bringing on? Um, how many folks are coming back? What are the areas of the business that you're looking for training in? Um, that, you know, the response was laser hair removal training, clarity training, um, more dermalogica training on innovation. Um, you know, just looking at this slide here, and most of this was actually done in the month of August. So there was there was a lot that was put out there. Um, I do have to say that attendance on all of these was very very minimal. Um, in fact, Clarity, Danielle from Clarity hosted several of these sessions with zero attendees. 
um, but obviously recorded the sessions um, and put them out there. So I, I do want to point out that you know we're very, very happy to invest and to put out all of these different training opportunities. Um, you know, we just ask that you guys, as best as you can, step up to the line and get your estheticians to attend these. Live is best. Um, you know, if they have to view the recorded afterwards, obviously we understand people have a variety of schedules and, and they could be at the spa working. Um, but we would just love to see more live attendance if we can start to get to that point. I think a lot more is gained um, from that aspect. Um, and even the, um, you know, the, the tentative in person that we had that we ended up having to reschedule anyway. Um, registration of attendance, super, super low. Um, I just have to say that in order to really get your estheticians to the next level, no matter where you think their skill set or level is, investing in education and training is best even for the most seasoned of estheticians. It's wonderful to bring them together as a group. It's very inspirational. They learn from one another. And in the skincare industry, we are all, myself included, as a licensed esthetician myself, we are never stopping the learning process. So please get them on these trainings. It's super important. We will continue to do them, um, but we would just love to see a little bit more on the attendance side. And now for the super exciting part of the presentation, in my opinion, um, we work behind the scenes on innovation throughout the year all the time. Um, we are constantly being presented different opportunities from inside vendors and outside vendors on different modalities we could explore, new product lines. Um, you can only imagine what we're presented with on a regular basis. So this is truly an evergreen campaign that we run. Um, and in fact, we've formed um, an internal corporate innovations committee with members um, of all departments from operations to marketing to brand experience. Um, Marlo is our Canadian voice on that committee. Um, and we meet every quarter and discuss our pipeline for the next six to 12 months. So you can rest assured that this is something we are very focused on in terms of forward thinking and where we want to take this organization. So first, I want to start out just by kind of quickly touching on the Clarity launch. Um, this is obviously not new news, but as you know, we are continuing um, our push on system-wide adoption of the Clarity line over the next six to 12 months. We do have adoption from the locations listed on the left side of the screen. Um, and I do wanna point out that the Clarity team has done so much to make this as simple and efficient of a launch as possible for all Canadian locations, including bringing on a dedicated local Canadian educator that will come out to your store in person, and train your staff, not only when you first bring on the line, but they are happy to do so and coming back in and helping with retrain requests as they come up. We've also established local Canadian distribution so that you don't have to worry about shipping and customs delays. Um, and really, if you think about it, and really part of the crux of the Clarity brand and philosophy is their focus on an all natural product line, on an ingredient deck. And you have to consider that today's consumer is really, really looking for that angle when they're shopping. Um, so we love the optionality that this provides in addition to Dermalogica. Um, we have, you know, shared the business case on this one and discussed um, the launch of this several times. So again, I'm not going to spend too much time today, but just putting it out there that this is a continued initiative for us. If you'd like to discuss, you know, whether the time is right for your spa right now, myself or Jacqueline, we're happy to, to set up a call and talk through it. But obviously, as a longstanding partner, Clarity continues to just be amazing from an education support perspective very unique product line and obviously the all natural aspect that they offer. So we do have an update on Dermal Infusion. Um, at this time, Allergan is still actually working through their strategy regarding distribution and support in Canada. This was actually something that when we first started exploring this a year to a year and a half ago, this was not mentioned whatsoever in full transparency to all of you. We thought, and in our conversations with our US-based account manager, that this would be a super simple transition, very easy to launch in Canada, no problem. Um, then the world shut down and there wasn't too big of a focus on it. We would touch base on it, et cetera. But then when we started reopening and getting that conversation going again, we came to learn that the serums that are used with the device do not currently have Health Canada approval. Not only that, Allergan has not yet determined their distribution and support strategy in the Canadian market yet. 
Anita and myself have been very much involved in pushing this conversation along and getting the right people from the Allergan organization on the phone to create urgency to really get this plan in order. And then obviously go through the steps that are required to gain that Health Canada approval for those serums so that we can move forward with the launch of this. We sent out surveys to all of you. And I do think it's safe to say that we have an overwhelming majority of spas in Canada that want to launch dermal infusion. So you can rest assured that once we do have approval on these angles and Allergan is ready to service your accounts, we are going to just move straight into really a soft launch um, of this service because we have the data to show that this is a proven success. And we know that most of you wanna bring this in as soon as readily available. So as of this time, it is a to be determined launch but we do want to disclaim before we share the next few slides with you that everything that we are also looking at is in conjunction with a tentative dermal infusion launch because we know everybody wants to do dermal infusion. So as soon as dermal infusion is available, we are planning to move ahead with dermal infusion. Any other innovation concept I'm about to present would really be in addition to the dermal infusion launch. Just going to check in. I see a couple of questions here. Um, it's not FDA approval, it's, it's Health Canada. So everything, FD, everything regarding FDA in the US is all squared away. Um, this is really in, in regards to the Health Canada approval on the serum specifically. Um, there's a question about whether or not there's a Canadian vendor. Um, I'm not sure. I'd have to, to check in with that. Um, Aileen, I don't know if that's is it specifically the dermal infusion technology or is it some other form of like hydrodermabrasion devices? Because there are in fact a lot of devices themselves on the market. Um, a lot of them are pretty low quality. We really do wanna stick with what we know here from the brand perspective. Um, we have we evaluated several devices before we even signed on with dermal infusion back in 2019. Um, and dermal infusion was by far and away the best fit for hand and stone. So I'd be curious to learn if there are other distribution options, but that's not been presented by Al again. Okay. All right. Okay, so next up, um, by request, we've heard from several of you over the last 12 months um, who have invested in the, the Triton device for your laser hair removal. Um, and several of you have inquired about the other capabilities of the device. Um, we have worked um, with Adam on some preliminary information on two different options, if interested. The first being form a skin tightening. Um, and, you know, this is very, you know, very bare bones details on this, but basically it is a non-invasive skin tightening service. It does utilize gentle radio frequency. Um, it is available to treat the face, the neck, um, it is safe on all skin types. It's non-invasive. It's painless. Um, the training would be provided as a full day on site by an in-mode trainer. Um, the cost of this is is, is twenty five thousand to Hand and Stone. The MSRP is thirty five. So this is a rather large investment. Um, we have not gotten very far down the path on this yet because we simply wanted to determine what the pricing structure would be along with potential interest from the owners. Obviously, the owners who already have the Triton device would be, um, you know, those that we would obviously typically want to start with here. Um, it would be a very large investment to purchase the device for hair removal and purchase this at the same time. But um, we are interested in understanding what, you know, your thoughts might be behind this. Um, the other option, and I'll have a, a little bit more on service pricing and ROI in just a moment, but there is an option B as well. So for the first option, it was a skin tightening feature. For option B, it's an IPL photofacial, which is typically um, intended to treat more like hyperpigmentation, as you can see on the images at the right, more for freckling, sun damage, um, it does help pull up any of that, uh, the stained cells um, with one technology. Um, they boast that it offers photo rejuvenation in one to two treatments versus four to six with standard IPL lights. I have to say that all of these laser companies, in my experience, always say they have the best and greatest in technology. So um, that's just, you know, my two cents on that. 
particular bullet. Um, you know, they're saying it's a very fast treatment time. It's very comfortable. It cools the skin at the same time. Um, I have experienced photofacials myself. It, it's, it, it typically is very quick. Um, they are pretty result driven in and of themselves because they're treating hyperpigmentation. It's a lot easier to see a tangible result because first you see pigmentation and, and, and damage. And then, you know, within weeks or months, you, the damage is gone. So it's nice to have that visible result from a treatment that's that expensive. Um, this device is 35,000. So this is 10,000 more dollars than the skin rejuvenation um, attachment. And again, you would be receiving a full day of support um, and training from an in-mode trainer upon purchase. So this slide just speaks to some of the suggested pricing that was offered by Adam. Um, I have not vetted this out. I'm not even saying that I endorse this. This is super preliminary. Um, he broke it out by whether the customer does a single session or a package. Um, as I shared on the Lumeca slide, results are generally generated in one to two sessions. So a package would be like a three session max. Um, versus the skin tightening, which obviously a package is much higher with eight sessions. So you can see just a little bit of the breakdown here. The nice thing on this, you know, just like the laser hair removal is that the product cost per treatment is very low. Um, and the margins are, are, are high once that device is, is paid for. Um, the ultrasound gel only costs you about 50 cents per treatment on average. Um, so obviously, you know, you've got a high margin there. Again, these are from Adam. Um, these are conservative and aggressive projections based on the area of the face and the treatment. Um, again, I have not done too much research into this. Um, the purpose of sharing all of this with, with you is to determine your interest level in us continuing the exploratory conversation on these attachments. And to that end, after today's discussion on the follow-up communication, we're actually going to have a survey linked in in which we bullet out all of the innovations that are presented today. And we're really curious on your feedback. Um, you know, are we on the right track or is it just not the right time for this? And the honest, honest answers and honest feedback are, are, are very much appreciated on this. We can really more um, formally outline what hand and stone projections would look like. These are directly from InMode. Um, but it is based on the pricing that was outlined in the prior slide um, and the pricing of the device themselves and it is all their opinion. So those are the Triton options. Next, we're moving on to New Face Canada. And so launching New Face in Canada for us has always been a, a, a natural fit. Um, it is something that we have had on our menu in the US since 2017. Um, it complements a ton of the services that we already perform. And we really did feel like now is the right time to bring this back around because the company, New Face, is actually going through a complete rebrand um, and device restage that's set to launch in early 2022. So January, February timeframe. Um, and we felt like that was a great time, you know, to present this to you owners now and see if there's an interest in getting, you know, getting the pieces moving on a launch in Canada because we have heard a few owners inquiring whether this might be an option for them in an effort to align their menu more with the success we see in the US. So again, just to kind of hone in on why we do feel that the time is right right now is the fact that New Face in service um, is available to be booked on as a multiple upgrade opportunity. So a New Face lift, um, we, you know, our suggested pricing for this in US was 20. I definitely feel like it can go higher up to a $30 price point for this upgrade. And you can layer this on top of your microderm, peel, any LED treatment. Um, so for us, this is a super natural fit and obviously creates additional revenue streams for you, both in treatment and also as part of retail. Um, New Face has designed sort of a full collection of at-home products, ranging from the New Face Mini all the way to the New Fix, um, which is their first ever microcurrent skincare device, which is actually targets around um, the eyes and the lips and helps to fill in fine lines and wrinkles in those areas. So we have a really strong crossover opportunity from service to retail here for you and, and differentiates us from our other competitors as well. We also have great support from the New Face team for training. Um, and you also have, have, have our support. 
in helping your estheticians with how to talk about new face, with how to position this as part of a multi upgrade approach, or even just the new face lift as an upgrade. So we're super excited about it. We absolutely love the partnership of new face. They're very cutting edge. They have a huge social media presence and we really feel like now is the right time to integrate it into the comedian menu. Skipped a slide there. Maybe I didn't. Okay. Um, the timeline on this, as I shared earlier, um, they are going through that restage, with the ex which they expect to be done by early next year. Um, and we're waiting on that Health Canada approval. Um, the launch investment, including full back bar and full retail, is $2,700. Um, we have just finalized the opening order. Um, obviously, to set you up for success, we would we would recommend that you go with the full suggested opening order, but of course that's at your, your discretion ultimately. Okay, I'm just looking through the question queue. There's a lot of comments here. Good feedback from everybody. I know, you know everybody's curious on the, on the margins of things. Aileen, I would like to touch base with you offline on the dermal infusion vendor. So great, thanks guys for the feedback. I do appreciate it. Um, there was a question on the, let's see. Okay, got it. Okay, super, super excited about this one, everyone. Um, this one's really hot off the presses for us. Jacqueline and I had a great meeting with the Dermalogica Canada team last week. And we feel like now is the time for microneedling in Canada. Um, this is a great way for you guys to jump into the game of device technology at a low investment and a high ticket price and a low cost for treatment. And this really will help expand our result-driven menu by focusing on device technology. So basically, this is really, really early in the planning stages. And again, we do want your feedback to see if you feel like this could be a fit for us at this time. But what we loved about the opportunity here was that for you as the owner, it's a relatively low investment, comparatively speaking, to get into the device game further. The pens themselves, and Dermalogica is, is working in partnership with us to identify um, the right vendors. We have spoken about a brand named Eclipse, which does have Health Canada approval. Um, we've also spoken of Biotherapeutic. Um, so we are investigating those options. But what we've heard so far in our initial discussion is that the price of the pen itself is somewhere between $1,000 and $1,500. Um, and then beyond that, the cost per treatment, including the cartridge that's used in the pen and the products, is about $36 per treatment. But the suggested service price is $300 for a 45 to 50 minute session. So we see this as another great margin opportunity for you. Nothing formal has been put together to present to you, but for the purpose of today's presentation, our intention was to present this opportunity to you and then gauge your interest level. And again, if you are interested in this, we will continue the discussion. And then at a later date, we will prepare and present a more formalized plan um, for a test program behind this. Um, Dermalogica is really spearheading the efforts here. They have an entire, and you may already be aware of this, but they have an entire training um, put together already to support this and have shared that they'd be willing to design something super hand and stone specific for us. Um, so we do have their support in getting this all pulled together rather quickly. Um, and if you're interested, we can keep the ball rolling um, and we can coordinate a test program that would launch as early as Q1. Um, and we would, you know, the length of the test program would be pretty standard. We usually do an eight, eight week um, up to a full quarter test. I think in this case, we could probably get it done in eight weeks. And then at that point, it would be made available to the rest of the system with successful results. But for me, I felt like this one is truly a no-brainer for all of you. Um, I hope you agree. And um, again, this will be a question on the survey that goes out just in a little bit. And we're very curious on your thoughts behind this. So very, very exciting stuff. Um, the, hold on, I'm checking into the question here. Yeah. Great, really good feedback overall. Um, I do wanna address, Penny had a question about cryoskin. And I do wanna just say that I do not have a slide dedicated to cryoskin on this presentation. Um, for those of you who might not be aware, um, we are currently testing cryoskin in the US. Um, the vendor on that is a brand named Artemis. Um, 
I guess I, I honestly did not even think that you guys might be interested in that with all that we have going on here with that laser hair removal device that so many of you guys have and we're interested in the additional capability of that. Um, so I actually, I can look into Cryo for Canada. I can tell you that the test program in the US has been a big success. Um, our wave one has 16 locations in it. Um, and right now, I just pulled the numbers through last week. So it launched on July 1st. So from July 1st until September the 12th, average weekly sales amongst the 16 stores is about $3,700 a week. Um, so I would consider that a massive success. And that focuses on slimming, toning, and facial toning services. So there's a lot of capability there. Um, but again, I actually didn't present that on today's session because I actually didn't want to overwhelm you guys um, because there was so much in interest in expanding the Triton. Um, but with that in mind, I will add that as a survey question um, and see if you are interested. I can't make any promises. I don't know what the situation is with their distribution in Canada, what the Health Canada situation might be. So I'm just putting that out there right now. Um, I will ask. I will find out everything I need to. But, um, you know, in conclusion on the innovation initiative, I do hope that everything that we've just shared with all of you demonstrates that we are very much invested in expanding the skincare menu over the next year. Um, we do wanna go about it in a well thought out strategic pace that's not distracting to your teams, that's not overwhelming to your consumer. We do want our consumer to know who we are and we are committed to providing very result-driven skincare services. Um, so we will, you know, I, I don't think we wanna do it all, um, I don't think that's the best approach. Um, in my experience, having one sort of A launch um, really every two years has been a key to our success. But I also understand that the Canadian menu um, may need to, to catch up a little bit, right? And you guys also have some options um, that are not available to us, like microneedling, which is actually restricted in several um, states within the scope of practice for estheticians. But fortunately in Canada, just like with laser hair removal, um, it is an option that's available and becoming popular. And I do think that we have a good opportunity here in that the Toronto area does not seem to be saturated um, with businesses offering microneedling at this time. So I think we have a nice market entry opportunity with this particular service. So that is the end of the presentation. I know there's a bunch of comments, some questions on ROI analysis. Nope. All right, but it does absolutely seem like the sentiment from you guys is, you know, very much on the on the same place. You guys are interested in these. You'd like more information specifically on margins and ROIs, um, some overwhelming interest on, on certain one of these. And we're happy to take the discussion further. But again, for the sake of today, we really wanted to focus on the vision of where we see Canada aesthetics going. And I do think the huge major starting point is getting more appointments on those books. So hopefully we provided you guys with a few tips and tricks to take the business forward. Jacqueline and myself are always here to support you and are happy to schedule follow-up calls to today's session. And then obviously Marlo is your go-to for anything as it relates to operations. So I want to thank everybody for joining today's session and we look forward to seeing your continued success in aesthetics. Take care, everybody.